Hola y bienvenidos a Coffee Break Spanish. Welcome back to Coffee Break Spanish. It's lesson 79 and in this lesson we're continuing to look at the subjunctive and in particular the triggers which make you use the subjunctive, the, the words and phrases which mean that you have to use a subjunctive after them. We'll also look at the context of directions and look at some further command forms. I hope you find this lesson useful. So, as we explained, Andrew is taking his friend Michael to the Ayuntamiento, which is, Cara, can you remember what the Ayuntamiento is? It's the town hall. Yeah, exactly, where he has to sign up for the class that he's going to be taking. And they've got lost, so they need some directions to get to the town hall. I'd like you to listen to the conversation between Andrew and the person in the street that he's bumped into to ask for directions, and see if you can identify how you say... Where can we get a taxi? Have a listen. Perdóneme, ¿es usted de aquí? Sí, soy de aquí. ¿Puedo ayudarles? Sí, estamos perdidos. Tenemos una reunión en el ayuntamiento a las dos. ¿No sabe decir dónde está? ¿A las dos? Ay, no tienen mucho tiempo. A ver, la verdad es que está bastante lejos de aquí. No creo que vayan a llegar allí antes de las dos. Quizás sea mejor ir en taxi. ¿Y dónde podemos coger un taxi? Hay una parada en la calle San Juan. Crucen la plaza y ya están en la calle San Juan. La parada está enfrente de la iglesia. Miren, ¿quieren que les acompañe? No, no, está bien. Muchas gracias. No hay problema. Espero que lleguen con tiempo. Gracias. Que tenga un buen día. So, Cara, did you spot how you would say, where can we take a taxi? Where can we get a taxi? Yes, he said, ¿dónde podemos coger un taxi? Exactly. Coger un taxi means to, to get a taxi. Or in some parts of Latin America, you would say, tomar un taxi. Tomar un taxi. Tomar un taxi. So, where can we get a taxi? ¿Dónde podemos coger un taxi? ¿Dónde podemos coger un taxi? So, as you've heard, Andrew and Michael are trying to get to the Ayuntamiento. And they are lost, so it turns out that they probably would be better getting a taxi. When they're speaking to the person in the street who's giving them directions, the phrase used is, Quizás sea mejor ir en taxi. Quizás sea mejor ir en taxi. Exactly. What do you know about sea? It is the present subjunctive of ser. That's right, the present subjunctive of ser. So what do you know, therefore, about quizás? That it takes the subjunctive. Exactly. Quizás means? Maybe or perhaps. Exactly. Perhaps, quizás, 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 we've done that lots. Quizás, followed by the subjunctive. So quizás sea mejor. Perhaps it is better to go by taxi. How would you say, perhaps, I speak Spanish? Quizás hable español. Yeah, how do you say perhaps he speaks Spanish? Quizás hable español. Yeah, that's a good example of a situation where you might well use the pronouns. Quizás él hable español. Quizás él hable español. Or quizás usted hable español. Quizás usted hable español. Yeah, so perhaps you, using the formal form, speak Spanish. Now, quizás taking the subjunctive, was in fact one of four situations in this conversation that we're going to look at where you use the subjunctive. The next one was No creo que vayan a llegar antes de las dos. No creo que. Okay, what does creo mean? To believe. Yeah, so creer, to believe, creo, I believe. So no creo, I don't believe. So, no creo que vayan a llegar. Now, vayan, that might make you think of a particular verb. Do you know which verb vayan comes from? Ir. That's right. It comes from ir, and it's the subjunctive of ir. It's really irregular. It starts vaya, vayas, vaya, vayamos, vayáis, vayan. Vaya, vayas, vaya. Vayamos, vaya, vayáis, 
Vayan. Yeah, the vayáis part is quite tricky. Vaya, vayas, vaya, vayamos, vayáis, vayan. So, no creo que vayan a llegar. I don't think that. You're going to arrive? Yeah, and he's using the ustedes form. No creo que vayan a llegar antes de las dos. I don't think that you're going to arrive before two. Try saying that the whole sentence. No creo que vayan a llegar antes de las dos. Exactly. Okay, how do you say, I don't think that he speaks Spanish? No creo que hable español. Muy bien, no creo que hable español. You might want to, to specify that you're talking about he, so no creo que él hable español, but obviously that depends on the context if you really need to say the él there. No creo que hable español. How would you say, I don't think that they eat gazpacho? No creo que coman gazpacho. Muy bien. No creo que coman gazpacho. So coman, being the present subjunctive, we, we know this well now. So no creo que coman gazpacho. Let's change it a little and let's say, I don't think that you live here. No pienso que vivas aquí. Muy bien. And I, I, I'm pleased that you use no pienso que because I don't think is the same in a sense as I don't believe. But when you say I don't believe, believe is creer, to think is pensar. And exactly the same thing happens with pensar. No pienso que vivas aquí. I don't think that you live here. You live, vivas, the subjunctive. So no creo que... And no pienso que. Both are followed by the subjunctive. And if they're both in the positive, like creo que or pienso que, what happens? They are not in the subjunctive. A very good question. And I was actually just about to come, come, come and explain that. No creo que vivas aquí, but creo que vives aquí. Okay, so vives is the non-subjunctive form. In actual fact, that's called the indicative. It's the indicative when it's not subjunctive. So vives, indicative, vivas, subjunctive. I think you live here. Pienso que vives aquí. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you live here. No pienso que vivas aquí. Muy bien, excelente. Okay, so we've had quizás. We've had no creo que and no pienso que. There were a couple of other situations I want to highlight. The first of these is espero que. What does esperar mean? To hope. To hope. Or to wait. Or to wait. Yeah, that's right. Espero que, in this sense, means I hope that. And the person that was giving them directions said, espero que lleguen con tiempo. Lleguen, obviously being the subjunctive. Lleguen, coming from which verb? Llegar. Llegar, meaning? To arrive. So I hope that you arrive in time, con tiempo, literally with time, con tiempo in time, or on time. I hope you arrive on time. Espero que lleguen con tiempo. Espero que lleguen con tiempo. How would you say, I hope she speaks English? Espero que hable inglés. Espero que hable inglés. What about, I hope that you eat gazpacho? Espero que comas gazpacho. Muy bien. Here's a tricky one. I hope that you like this music. Espero que... I'm not sure how to work this one out. Okay, let's think about this. I hope that you like this music is the same as saying, I hope that this music pleases you. Okay, and the verb pleases, which is taken from the verb gustar in Spanish, has to be in the subjunctive. So, it espero que... Guste? Yeah. So, I hope this music pleases you. Espero que esta música guste. Te guste. That's it, yeah, exactly. Espero que esta música, this music, te guste. Okay, guste being the subjunctive, and te, to you, pleases. Espero que esta música te guste. Or indeed, perhaps even more natural, espero que te guste 
esta música. Espero que te guste esta música. So, does that all make sense? Esperar que plus the subjunctive? Yes. How would you say then, I hope that she sells chocolate? Espero que venda chocolate. Espero que venda chocolate. Or indeed, if you wanted to be really hypercorrect there, you could say, I hope that chocolate is sold. Espero que se venda chocolate, which is perhaps a more normal way of saying it in Spanish. Okay? And if you were buying the chocolate, how would you say, I hope that we don't eat too much? Espero que no comamos demasiado. Muy bien. Espero que no comamos demasiado. Okay. Now, all this espero que and no creo que and no pienso que and quizás indeed are the examples so far that we've seen of the subjunctive in this week's dialogue. There are two other examples. I said earlier that there were four. In fact, there are five I want to look at. The next one that we're going to look at is when, at the very end, Andrew said, Que tenga un buen día. Que tenga un buen día. Que tenga un buen día. Yeah. So, que tenga, tenga is subjunctive. Think of tengo, I have, and then replace the endings. It becomes tenga, 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 tengamos, tengáis, tengan. So, que tenga, just putting the que in front of it, is sort of making it like a wish. I wish that you have a good day. Or, I hope you have a good day. Espero que tenga un buen día. Espero que tenga un buen día. Muy bien. So, you can drop the espero que in certain situations, particularly in situations where you've got a phrase that's almost like a set phrase. Que tenga un buen día. Que tenga un buen día. Or, for example, que tenga suerte. Que tenga suerte. Literally, uh, may you have luck. I hope you have luck. So, que tengas suerte. Que tengas suerte. Obviously, that's the tu form, and the usted form would be... Que tenga suerte. I suppose it's just like wishing someone luck in English. Yeah, and when you say, I wish you luck, you're saying that I wish that you have luck. We'll come back to that in a moment. But que tenga un buen día. That you may have a nice day. Que tenga un buen día. Que tenga un buen día. Espero que lleguen con tiempo. Espero que lleguen con tiempo. Muy bien. Let's think about this very carefully. I hope that they arrive. Okay? I hope that you have a nice day. I could say, I hope that I arrive. And in that situation, I'm doing the hoping and I'm doing the arriving. Okay, that makes sense so far? Yep. If I say, I want to listen to music, I'm doing the wanting. And you're doing the listening. Exactly. If I say, I hope that you arrive, I'm doing the hoping but. I'm doing the arriving. Yeah, you're, you're doing the arriving in this situation. And if I say, I want you to listen to music, I'm doing the wanting and... I'm doing the listening. Yeah. So the point is, when you have the same person doing the hoping or wanting and doing the actual action. So let's take that example of, I want to listen to music. Quiero escuchar música. I want to listen to music. Very straightforward. We've done that hundreds of times. Quiero escuchar música. Quiero escuchar música. The same could happen with... I hope to arrive on time. Espero llegar con tiempo. Espero llegar con tiempo. Okay, so in that situation, I'm doing the hoping, I'm doing the arriving, I'm doing the wanting, I'm doing the listening. However, when it comes to I want you to listen to music, I would say quiero que, and then the subjunctive, you listen to. To music. So, escuchar in the subjunctive would be... Escuches, if you're talking es, about yeah, that e person. Exactly. Escuches. I want that you listen to music. Quiero que... Escuches música. 
escuches música. And if we're talking about specific music here, we would say, quiero que escuches la música. Quiero escuches la música. Quiero something missing. Quiero que. Quiero que escuches la música. And this situation came up in the dialogue. The person said, miren, ¿quieren que les acompañe? So, do you want, do ustedes form, ¿quieren que les acompañe? ¿Quieren que les acompañe? So, do you want that I accompany you? So, accompany being acompañe in the subjunctive form. ¿Quieren que les acompañe? ¿Quieren que les acompañe? Cara, how would you say, do you want, using the to form, that I accompany you? Just the, the singular to informal. Okay. ¿Quieres que te acompañe? Good. Quier, ¿Quieres, do you want, que te acompañe? Okay, so do you want that I accompany you? Perdóneme, ¿es usted de aquí? Sí, soy de aquí. ¿Puedo ayudarles? Sí, estamos perdidos. Tenemos una reunión en el ayuntamiento a las dos. ¿Nos sabe decir dónde está? Uh, ¿A las dos? Ay, no tienen mucho tiempo. A ver, mmm, la verdad es que está bastante lejos de aquí. No creo que vayan a llegar allí antes de las dos. Mmm, quizás sea mejor ir en taxi. ¿Y dónde podemos coger un taxi? Hay una parada en la calle San Juan. Crucen la plaza y ya están en la calle San Juan. La parada está enfrente de la iglesia. Miren, ¿quieren que les acompañe? No, no, está bien, muchas gracias. No hay problema, espero que lleguen con tiempo. Gracias, que tengan un buen día. And that's where we're going to leave it today for this edition of Coffee Break Spanish. Thanks for joining us and we hope it's been useful. You can join the Coffee Break Spanish community on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffeebreakspanish and follow at Learn Spanish on Twitter. Muchas gracias y hasta pronto. Coffee Break. Coffee Break This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.